In all my years of trading and investing, the most dangerous period for stocks were often times when the market did absolutely nothing. Because that's when the big moves completely caught everybody off guard. And as we await CPI, the market seems to be doing nothing. And these are the times when we must stay at the highest of alert and expect the unexpected. So today, I'm bringing you everything you need to know ahead of the key upcoming inflation data. We don't want another hot print, and I'm here to tell you what will happen if we do. We're also going to be talking about the Magnificent 7 earnings, as well as some other key data points we're getting this week. We've got a lot to talk about, so let's roll the tape. Welcome everybody to the Daily Recap Show, where we talk about stocks and the financial markets. My name is Chase. Guys, if you like this video, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, like this video, and leave a comment for the algorithm. Let's get into it. So looking at the daily heat map here of the S&P 500, a very, very flat day overall in the market. I mean, we had semiconductors and a couple of these tech names do really really well apple google tesla you know they really led a lot of the index higher but other than that it was either just a flat day for most stocks like jp morgan mastercard but it's a pretty red day stuff like costco meta uh you know across the board and to be honest with you i don't think there was much to take from today's trade other than the fact that the market is probably just waiting for the cpi print uh later this week i mean we have a look at some of the sectors sure we had tech up a lot that had to do with you know apple and just semiconductors but a, a very weak day across the board i mean you know the spy was pretty much flat for the day software beat the spy real estate and xme you know the metals mining etf other than that every other sector lost from utilities semiconductors xlb against the s p 500 and the worst performing sector year was gdx as well as home construction and then industrials and financials, you know, they each lost 0.42%. But I wouldn't take too much away from today's trade. There wasn't any real leader. There wasn't anything to base your trade off on. I think we're really going to see leadership take form later on in the week. Once we get the CPI news, maybe once we get PPI and some of those retail sales figures, then we're really going to see what's going to happen in the market. Let's hop on the charts because there were a couple of interesting things nonetheless. This right here is the S&P 500. You can see we had a pretty flat day, a pretty red day. We actually did gap up here in the morning. You know, so futures were a bit upbeat before the market. We did gap up, but then we parted a lot of those losses. But we can actually see that while the S&P 500 was flat, the Nasdaq was actually up a lot. And again, that had to do with the market cap weight series of it. Apple, semiconductors, and their weight in the Nasdaq 100. If you don't know, about 30% of the Nasdaq 100 is actually semiconductor companies. That's why when semiconductors are upbeat, when Apple's upbeat or Microsoft, you normally see the Nasdaq outperform the broader market. But if you actually want to look at a real proxy for the stock market, I'm going to look at the Dow Jones. And that was down 0.21 percent right and then the rsp was pretty much flat but a bit upbeat here in the after hours very interesting mid caps were flat the sp 600 was up iwm was up and then again you know the spy was flat right there and then growth nor value performed outperformed each other they were pretty much the same on the day so yeah a little bit upbeat here in the after hours on futures but inconsequential i i think you know what really is gonna it's what really is gonna move this market is once we get those cpi figures if they're gonna be hot if they're gonna be cool we're gonna see the market move in various ways not much really happened with rates as well it was a very muted day across the board you know down 0.27 percent so i guess you could say rates you know, interest rates did fall that could help the market but if you actually have a look uh, right here there's quite a bit of a week so they did actually fall quite a lot and then buyers stepped in so but nonetheless flat for the day pretty much bonds not a lot happened here with bonds tlt did gain ever so slightly and there are a bit upbeat here in the after hours and then bitcoin let's have a look at bitcoin yeah so it looks like bitcoin is moving up to this trend line right here very interesting trade we'll see if this acts as resistance or if it could like move above use a support and then continue the trend higher but bitcoin does look technically weak uh, when you look at this chart from a lower low to a lower high perspective base only we then have a look at gold gold actually did all on the day very very interesting when if you actually have a look at stuff like gdx right they had quite the volatile day of trade today. They came all the way down from the bottom and then rallied quite significantly. If we look at this at a percentage term basis, right, that's 1.2% all the way there. So that's a very, very strong rally off the lows, despite the fact that if we do look at gold on the daily chart, you know, it was pretty much you know opened and then closed at the bottom of the day so a bit of divergence between gold miners as well as gold as a whole silver not doing too much but still balancing at the top of this range the dollar did lose ever so slightly and crude oil did gain but again like we've said before you know the 78 to 88 dollar range that's where we want to see price now now looking at the s p 500 there isn't much to say so we actually did just put up 
a red a red body candle as you can see right here however it was flat because we did gap up quite significantly actually here futures were quite upbeat in the pre-market guys we're less than like half a percentage point away here from new all-time highs and it seems very inevitable like we are going to go ahead and get that and you know what a rally it truly has been to see this bottom being put in and then us to rally you know from this five six percent pullback it was just a garden variety pullback and had you look at the markets and the state of the economy and generally just scrolled out on your chart you would have seen that hey you know this was going to be a garden variety pullback now looking at the five minute chart you can see some very interesting stuff you know we gapped up Pretty much weighed all the way down and very similar to gdx you know we found a bottom right here around this 1 30 pm mark and then sort of made our way up but all in all flat for the day we were negative at one point so the market just really just balancing out ahead of the cpi just trying to you know discover price ahead of the cpi and that's really when the market's going to move i think it might move with, with ppi as well but i wouldn't take much on today's trade you should already be positioned you know somewhere within this rally and in the bigger context of it all you should be positioned somewhere in here in the s p 500 so what we're doing right now is biding time waiting for cpi and then once we get that news we'll make our way from there now earnings is coming to a close so volatility will be muted on that front but if we actually just pull up the gamma chart right here we can actually see that 5165 is the gamma flip zone and i would say that until we actually get below this right here, that's when you really just want to buy, dip, sell, rip. Some very interesting things as well. Guys, we saw here the 5300 level is now actually getting built up significantly more than the 5200 level. And I think that's what it's going to take with this market right here. I think what's going to need to happen with the S&P 500 is that for it to actually move, you know, back above all time highs so to stay there gamma flip zone is going to need to move up to 5300 and we are starting to see a lot of price action happen right there this is opex week there's going to be a lot of volume a lot of volatility we can definitely see this 5300 strike move up for friday if it does that would be the sign to go bullish otherwise we're going to have to wait for all of this to roll off and see where it ends up all in all i would look to the 5165 area as the first level of support and then we do move higher if we do get below here Maybe on the CPI news, PPI news, or retail sales. Maybe things come in a bit worse than expected. Maybe hotter than expected. Then we probably could move lower. But I would say that probably what 51.65 is a very very strong area of support for this week. And I would say that probably the top of all time highs is probably going to be the resistance point. Maybe we do have price discovery above. But normally when we do hit all time highs, we don't like rally one percent. Um, from there we normally just discover price a little bit higher pull back do the same that's normally what happens at all time high so uh, 5165 and then like what 5280 that's probably going to be a range for the week uh, below what 5165 i'll give you guys an update so go ahead subscribe so you don't miss that if we do get quite a bit of volatility this week and do move lower and if everything comes in line i think what we're going to do is probably just trend sideways uh for the rest of may we've had quite the rally already here in may you know six percent here for the month a bit of digestion is completely normal okay guys looking at the weekend sentiment poll right here next week for the s p 500 are you bullish bearish or neutral and last week we had a lot of bullish votes and we did have a bullish week so it really was one where if you faded the poll you didn't do very well this week we actually got more of a balanced vote here still leaning more bullish 46 percent of you guys are bullish and that is very very bullish however do look here you can see 36 percent of votes are bearish and 18 percent of you guys are neutral we have 748 votes so thank you to each and every single one of you who voted and this is i would say not statistically significant you need a huge number of these data points but in terms of the people that go ahead and vote you can definitely say that the, the sentiment here is skewed towards the bulls and this bullish sentiment is not unfounded this right here is some nasdaq statistics that is in favor of the bulls and it's pretty much the nasdaq performance from may 11th to the 31st when april 30th to may 11th is up at least two percent so we've seen a massive pullback here in the s p 500 we've had a bounce that bounce has been bigger than two percent during this time period and in the last 50 years this is the returns we can expect when we've had this price action prior and you can actually see here that this is the setup and this is the reaction so for the period stated right here april 30th to may 11th the nasdaq was up 3.18 percent in similar periods when that has occurred we've actually seen the nasdaq return 2.82 percent in the following 20 days that would be about 12 to 15 trading days and we could see the average return 
2.82%, 13 wins, zero losses. Very, very positive stats right here. So we are moving into a bullish period. Sentiment is bullish and the stats are on the side of the bulls, especially here for the NASDAQ. And by the way, this isn't the NASDAQ 100. This is the NASDAQ composite. So we can actually expect more bullish price action. And if we do get, again, you know, minor pullbacks, you do want to be buyers of those dips because it's very likely we are going higher. Stats are on the side of the bulls. So very, very bullish stats nonetheless. Now, guys, Guys, looking at the earnings scorecard, virtually nothing has changed. We're still sitting at 7.8% earnings growth on an absolute basis in the S&P 500. Excluding the Corona Therapeutics acquisition here by BMY, 10.9% earnings growth and excluding energy, 10.9% earnings growth. And that's what we were at the start of earnings season. And it's very, very good. Now, guys, what we're also seeing right here is that earnings are being revised positively, especially in the last three months. This right here is January 24, and particularly here in April May period, we've seen huge upward revisions, and this has to do with guidance figures companies have given us in this earnings season. You can see this is the net revision momentum, and this is really, really positive. I put a post up on Twitter, and this is really how you should look at the market, right? Are earnings growing? Yes. Are they expected to grow? Yes. Then buy the dip and watch the rip. That's really all this market cares about, right? If the macro is good, fundamental is good, the technical will be set up good. And that's what we're seeing right now. That's why markets, at least this past week, are rallying in aggregate. Now, diving into the earnings of the Russell 2000, guys, very interesting earnings right here. So this is the blended earnings growth rate. Positive earnings growth so far here for the Russell up point zero seven percent the best sectors are healthcare real estate industrials and utilities and then on the revenue front right here we're sitting at negative one percent with the only positive sectors being comp services financials industrials and healthcare so all in all you know not doing too good on the revenue side not but pretty good on the earnings side because we were expecting about a three percent decline here in the russell so to actually see this is absolutely fantastic and if we are to dive deeper we've got some commentary here from Elsec, they say the 2024 this is for the russell 2000 the q1 2024 year-over-year -year blended earnings growth estimate is 0.7 percent i just showed you that if the energy sector is excluded the growth rate for the index is 14.8 percent double digit growth here for the russell 2000 excluding the energy sector 1287 companies in the russell have reported 60.8 percent have reported above analyst expectation the revenue growth rate is one percent i showed you that earlier if the energy sector is excluded excluded the growth rate for the index is negative 0.4 percent so this right here is absolutely fantastic and as long as the russell can sort of include the energy sector and see growth over the next couple of quarters we're definitely going to see an inflection and in new all-time highs here in the russell at the end of the day the only thing is that matters is what earnings are doing now and what earnings are going to do in the future and that's why i don't think earnings season should be called earnings season it should be called earnings and guidance season because that's really what it is now let's look at the rest of the world this is europe and um, asia pacific so what this data right here tells us is what the gross estimates were expected for 2024 and where they are right now. And pretty much we were looking at negative earnings growth here for Europe. We're actually looking at positive earnings growth here for Europe and Asia Pacific. It was 1% growth. And this is absolutely crazy. And I think a large part of this has to do with the China recovery. China's 2024 earnings growth is looking at 26%. And the 2025 growth is something like 17 or 18%. So huge uptick here in Asia Pacific. And this is goes to show why equities are rallying the same is true for the u.s guys you can actually see this is the reason why equities are rallying because we had massive upward revisions from 2023 into 2024 for earnings this year when earnings are coming in strong and earnings are expected to come in strong equities will rally now looking at buyback authorizations often a proxy for what the market's going to do through the 3rd of may we've actually seen 550 billion dollars worth of buyback announcements and is that not crazy that apple accounts for 110 billion dollars of that absolutely insane and so we are you know 550 billion and we are trailing 2023 2022 into may you do have to understand that this is still historically above what is the normal average here for buybacks and this is uh, going to be very, very supportive of the equity markets, especially when you look at the RSP. You know, a lot of these companies are buying back their stocks at very, very reasonable valuation, 17 times, 16 times. So really going to boost the overall market and earnings per share for next year and years ahead. Now, looking at the Magnificent 7, this is very, very interesting. This is net income and share repurchases. So this is the annual buybacks, as you can see right here. Annual buybacks are actually expected to somewhat remain flat and decrease. I think a lot of this has to do with uh, stuff like Meta as well as Tesla 
their buybacks aren't quite as strong as what they were you know during this 2022 2023 period in fact tesla had no buybacks but we are also seeing consensus net income and net income overall increase and as long as net income as a whole is increasing we should see this buyback figure pick up here into the future so this is not a worry but what this is also telling us is that a lot of the buyback authorizations we saw on the last slide is coming from the broader market and it's not just the massive mag seven names and that's a really healthy environment now guys let's talk about cpi because we get cpi ppi data next week and across developed markets and emerging markets the disinflation narrative is well and in full effect you can actually see that Excluding the US, the winds of disinflation remain in full force. Median CPI year over year based on 45 countries as of today, and we're sitting just under 3%. And I do think this is probably going to continue to go lower to this 2% range right here. And, you know, this just means that central banks are very much on the verge of cutting. Some countries in Europe are already cutting, and that's a really, really good thing. And we get the CPI data for the US next week, a very big data point that we have to pay attention to. So I just thought I'd give you a quick rundown of where every everything sits on a month over month basis as well as a year over year basis now we do have cpi but we're going to go through cpi as well as pce where we stand and what's happening so on a year over year basis cpi right now as of may 2024 is at 3.56% year over year for cpi 3.59 pce sits at 2.74 by the way pce is the fed's preferred gauge of inflation and then core pce sits at 2.5 six eight percent on a month over month basis last month in may cpi was 0 0.14 core cpi was 0 0.3 pce was 0 0.14 core pce was 0 0.23 percent now we are expecting cpi to come in at 3.4 percent year over year and then 3.6 percent uh, on the core version so this is the headline this is the core and then on the month over month we're expecting 0 0.4 percent on the headline number and then 0 0.3 percent here for the core number the only difference with the bofa estimates is that the headline number they're expecting to come in at 0 0.3 so a little bit cooler it's very very interesting we actually get ppi here first in the week we normally get cpi first but this week we actually get ppi and the consensus says 0.3 percent on the month of a month figure and then core at 0.2 percent and then in other big data points this week we have retail sales right here we also get housing starts and permits as well as industrial uh, production right here so a very big week of data guys now on the earnings front it's not looking that big of a week in earnings but it is going to be a big week for the consumer number one as well as a lot of chinese companies you can actually see we have stuff like stone Co. this is going to tell us how the south american consumer is looking which is good to get a gauge of you know where the rest of the world is we do have stuff like alibaba group nu home depot and we also have stuff like cisco so a couple of tech names innovate maxon we also do have stuff like c Sony. Then we have Walmart, Baidu, JD, John Deere. That's a very big a day there in the pre-market on Thursday and caused a bit of volatility. And applied materials, so a big name in the semiconductor manufacturing space, Hopart. I know a lot of compound bros absolutely love the stock right here. DXC Technology, and then Friday, nothing big right there. So not a huge week of earnings, but you know, it's definitely going to tell us with CPI, it's going to tell us, you know, where the consumer is uh, standing this week. So very, very big week here in just in terms of of the general health of the economy so next week guys we get retail sales along with cpi so it gives us a good snapshot as to how the consumer is faring because cpi is just a consumer price index it's literally what consumers are buying and retail sales tells us very much the same thing the real core control retail sales were up 2.3 percent annualized from december 23 to march 2024 the three-month growth rate is likely to pick up in april so we're seeing a lot of talk about the consumer is tapped out i don't think that is the case according to this both for data right here we should actually see retail sales increase now what implications is that going to have on cpi it's yet to be seen because we a big component of cpi is energy and shelter and we have seen energy prices come down in a very significant way we do know rate cuts are on the way for shelter as well as just the lags in the oer owner's equivalent rent so we could definitely see retail sales tick up and inflation still come down and that would be insanely bullish for the market in aggregate now looking at monthly card spending per household by major category we saw huge upticks here in retail card spending and again when people say tapped consumer i'm like what tapped consumer look at gas up 3.1 percent in april but let's be real that probably had to do with oil prices and how much they rallied in the month of april against the stocks coming down we look at furniture increase home improvement guys i spent a ton of money on furniture and home improvement plus flowers for my wife unreal also clothing up 1.7 percent grocery 0.8 percent 
general merchandise, department stores, restaurants, lodging. Guys, these are all very, very green. In fact, the only negative uh, indicator here was airline and then total online retail sales. That's it, card not present. So pretty much we're seeing very, very strong consumer trends. And according to both, they do expect that to continue. And again, if we can see inflation come down, but consumer spending staying strong, that's going to be very, very healthy for the market overall. Now, this right here is GDP. We're going to look at the economy, how everything is faring. And guys, GDP forecasts versus the Bloomberg consensus. So it's Goldman's forecast, Bloomberg's forecast. And look at what we're seeing here with GDP, guys. Um, we're seeing a huge uptick in China's GDP coming into the year. We're seeing US GDP remain pretty flat, but still very, very elevated in the grand scheme of things. And we might be starting to see an uptick and a bottoming out process here in Europe. Very, very low at 0.6%. Uh, so maybe we do see this tick up a uh, year in the future and get to the 1% mark in the euro area. And, you know, the earnings might actually be supportive of this because we're seeing Europe earnings get revised higher in a very big way. And I think Europe is actually setting up for, you know, with rate cuts earnings revisions higher, growth coming back into the market. We could definitely see equities soar, especially at the valuation. I think Europe trades at like 12 times, 13 times, very low valuations. If you're looking for value and potentially growth that's not priced in to the market, look at the euro area. And then globally, it's looking like GDP is going to come in at the 2.5, 2.7% range, at least as the Goldman Sachs expect. Now guys, looking at some seasonal charts, this is the S&P 500 election year seasonal pattern. The green line represents a big election year similar to the one we've had here in 2004 the red line and this is the average year now this chart is a couple of weeks old we've actually rallied from this low to about right here this is what the chart actually looks like this red line i mean you can actually see that we are tracking well within a big election year seasonality during an election year now what does this mean probably means that we're probably going to trend sideways for the next couple of weeks probably up until the end of may into the start of june you can actually see here that based on this green line we normally form a bottom sort of around here towards the start of june to the middle of June. Now that doesn't mean we won't hit new all-time highs. We can 100% go ahead and hit new all-time highs. I mean, we could rally all the way up new all-time highs and then come all the way back down and just do this that's what the sideways pattern can look like i mean the sideways pattern could look like this it could even just look like this but what i am trying to say here is that probably towards the middle of june based on this pattern right here we probably are going to trend sideways i don't think we're gonna have a blockbuster rally like we did in january or february here for the rest of may i think we've made most of the gains already in the month that being said for the rest of the year i do believe we are gonna go higher and based on history this seasonal pattern tells us we are going to go higher whether it's a big election year like it is right here or all election years the path of least resistance for the rest of 2024 is higher now looking at one of my models this is the core leadership model right here and pretty much after the 5% pullback we saw, we saw the core leadership model move into weak leadership ever so slightly. That's because a lot of the midterm breadth indicators did pull back quite substantially. And we did make quite a bit of new lows, especially on the short term indicators. But ever since we have rallied back up above the zero line, bullish, that's what you want to see. And this does leave us some room for us to move higher back into the stronger leadership area. So that means we can definitely go higher in the S&P 500. But we've also already made most of the gains, as you can see right here, where as if this would be the top or about three quarters of the way there. So part of least resistance is higher, but we've already made most of the gains from the lows from here. It's just going to be a slow trend upward. And that's generally what bull markets consist of. You can see bear markets, right? Normally happen very, very quickly because bull markets tend to be quite extended. Bottoms tend to be events tops tend to be quite a bit of a process now looking at liquidity united states liquidity is officially above the bid zone whereas the eurozone is quite a bit below the bid zone we probably will move into the bid zone particularly as we get a lot of rate cut decisions in europe and a lot of countries will start to see rate cuts materialize maybe if not this month in the next couple of months for sure we know that a ton of european countries are on the brink of cutting rates far quicker here than the us that being said that is going to be supportive for liquidity and liquidity has been on the up and up as markets have rallied and i do expect this to continue i do expect liquidity to continue to move higher and in fact we are actually moving into a lot easier liquidity conditions than we have for most of this year do take into consideration that we also are in opex here in the united states this is options expiry week often that does coincide with a ton of liquidity coming into the market if you've made it up until here thank you so much for watching if you like this video please subscribe hit that notification bell guys that really actually helps 
helps me out. Leave a like and a comment on the video. Cheers.